We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness. <laughs> Have you ever had an unpleasant experience in love? Have you ever given all of your heart, your body and soul to someone who's just trampled all over it? because perhaps they did not love you as much as you loved them. Today on We Got This Africa, I'm going to be talking to two amazing ladies who gave their all in love and did not get so much of that in return. My name is Naa Shoko. You're welcome to our show. We Got This. to have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil, also cholesterol-free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. And we're back. Thank you for staying. This is We Got This Africa. And I'm joined today in the studio by my sweet lady, Mary. Hi, how are you Hello. doing? I'm good. And we're connecting with Auntie Millie via Zoom. Hi, Auntie Millie. Hello. How are you Hello. doing? Nice to be with you guys. Thank you. I'm so glad you're both here. So let's start with you in the studio, Mary. What's your story? Um... I think when we are in love, as you said, uh, we try to not see the negative side of the partner that we are with. And for me, looking back, I think I saw some of the signs, but I ignored it. And so I went in there. Uh, this is someone, and mine is from the church. Okay, this is a, someone who leads worship, you know, a worshiper and everything. He actually pursued me for a year. I did not mind him because I was like, I'm not going to date anyone in the church because they have some kind of attitude to it. And then later on, I was like, oh, okay, after a year, I was like, he's still persistent. Let me give it a try. Okay, we get in there. Um, he basically showed me that this is everything that I needed. He was caring, kind, was loving. very. I bet he was, was handsome. Oh, yeah, he's very good looking. Okay. That I must give to him. Okay. And so um, I looked at all of that and I said yes to him. We were in the relationship a year on. I saw some things, but I just ignored it and decided to pray on it as usual. And so praying about it and everything and still sticking my head in there. He had financial challenges. So since I was in the better position, I decided to invest in him. So he, he came up, he said, okay, he lost his job. Okay, now he wants to go into music, start a music studio. I bought everything in the studio, How invested. Much? Oh, no, we don't want to talk about the man. It gives me a headache when I think about it. A music studio? It. Yes. I have a fair idea how much that will cost. Oh, yes. And then from there, he said, oh, um, I want to go into renting, uh, rent house. Or what happened to the music group. business? Um, he said it was ongoing. Um, I was supposed to even visit it. I visited once. And afterwards, um, I, every time I want to go there, you always have an excuse or something. And because I was also very busy, um, I, when he says that, I just trust him. That is just the thing. I trusted him. And then he said, oh, he wants to go into rental, musical rentals. Um, so now the equipment, uh, speakers and all of those things. So yes, you bought I bought them. 
And then actually thinking about it, I think I was under some kind of spell because I didn't even understand how come I was spending so much money. <laughs> anyway, and then from there, um, that too, it was like, oh, he rented it to someone who was going to use it to, um, for, his, I think, a club or a pub and that the person will be sending the money every month. I said, okay, every time I ask uh, what, where is the returns, I need to see what's happening. It tells me stories. And then finally, it was like, oh, everything has been transferred into the account. I said, okay, let's go to the bank. I want to see the balance. Never showed to me. Always had an issue to the point where it got someone from the bank to call me, which I think was a planting thing later, um, to tell me that, oh, there was some issues and blah, blah, blah. So they are trying to resolve the account and that they will send me the balance as soon as possible. I just let it go. Um, then finally, I think the third thing was, oh, he wants to go into photography. Oh, wow. He changed a lot of jobs. Yes. How many years was the? How long did this relationship last? In three years. So in three years, he had changed three uh, jobs. Yes. Which you were financing. Yes. And so I did that. And then expecting to have some returns in there. But then there was a lot of issues, rumors in church, uh, chasing other girls. Uh, doing all kinds of things, drinking, you know, for a worshiper, I think, oh, these things, you, you are not supposed to be doing them. So I thought I found someone in the church that is just going to be like me. Uh, but he was doing all these kinds of things. And you know, when I used to complain to our pastor then, he tells me, oh, just pray about it. It's okay. Uh, it will change. You know, it's the devil. It will change. Just pray about it. So they kept on, you know, doing that to me to the point where we even planned on getting married. You know, we have everything prepared, got the gowns and all those things and everything. But that was the last minute. I was like, no, I cannot take this anymore. Like, can I see myself with him in the next 20 years? Can I still go through this? And the next thing that a lot of people didn't know about him, he was um, very violent when he gets mad. And um, I think in the second year, I will, after like three uh, rumors of him cheating or something like that, I told him that I'm done with him. I don't want to have anything to do with him. He actually destroyed the tables in my house. He went downstairs, uh, destroyed my windshield on my car. My he side passed mirror. your car. Oh, yes. And then afterwards... Did you like, go to the police? Uh, no, I didn't. Did he hit you? No, he didn't. But it just destroys the things around him. And then he was like, I, it, there is no way I can leave him. If I leave him, then uh, it's, it's either him or then there is no one else. So uh, he, he showed me this attitude for like three times, I think. Destroying your things or destroying his things? My things. Why you does he destroy your in things? in my house. <laughs> because we always have that conversation in my house. And so then he destroys it and then he leaves and then he will come back and he will beg. He will cry. He will crawl on the floor. Like really crawl on my leg. Ah, you cannot leave me. If you leave me, I'm going to die. I will kill myself. A whole lot. And then I was like, I was looking at, okay, this person, I know he was gifted. Because when he, he worships, I saw that. And I know he had this gift, but he was messing it up. And, and after praying and meditating, I realized I was in a cycle with him. It's basically a toxic relationship. It was not going anywhere. Because he would do it, come back, beg, crawl, cry, do all the tantrums, and then be good for like one month, two months. He will be the best person ever. He will be there doing everything that I like. And then afterwards, it goes back into the same thing. So that was when I, I drew the line. I was like, this is it. Enough is enough. I've had enough of this. And so I call it quits. But because I know of his violent behavior, what I did was I had a friend. I made a friend in the police. And so I drafted the letter myself and then had that guy stamp on it with the police stamp. And then I showed him, I, I took a screenshot and then sent it to him. And then everything of his that was left in my house, I packed it into a box nicely. 
labeled it and then i wrote a letter do not contact me ever again if you do this is the letter to the police saying that if anything happens to me you are responsible and i've sent this same letter to my hr in the company because it wasn't in ghana and so i've sent it to my hr as well if anything happens to me know that you and your entire family will be arrested so do not touch me i drove to his brother's house because i didn't want to go to his end dropped it at his brother's and told him this is it call your brother let him come for it and that was it and i actually planned this around because i was traveling from there on vacation so then i planned it right there so that night dropping it off i was on vacation and i left so for two weeks they tried to reach me and now no one can reach me and then when i came back everything was cool and calm but i later he was stalking me at a point stalking you yeah yeah, yeah. what he kind was of following me everywhere following you mm. Ooh. came to my office asked everyone in the office to beg me to take him back and all of that and you know the shocking thing in the church they were all like why did you break up you were getting married blah, blah. i said come on i am the one who was in that situation i was the one wearing the boots i know how hot it is in do not be uh convinced by what you see when it comes to church and all of that there is more that you do not know about him and if you were in there you would equally leave but you know they were all talking like oh why did you do that mary blah 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 they were all talking like that but the interesting thing was the same pastor that kept telling me to pray about his attitude pray about his character when I told him, okay, I'm done, I'm no more with this person, he's like, oh, thank God, Mary, it's a deliverance. I'm like, huh? Like, so you, 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 you knew it, it wasn't good for me, and yet you were telling me to pray about it. Did you it. ask him that? Yeah, I did. What and did he was say? Like, he was like, he didn't want to interfere in our relationship, wow. so all he wants is that I should pray about it, and that God should reveal to me myself mm. that it wasn't good for me. So I didn't get anything from all that investment <laughs> um, but i'm happy to have left with my life so i'm good so you literally funded him for three years yeah well i'm glad and you're his out family. of it mm. and his family oh yeah his family was what? Uh, his parents yeah they were asking you for money of course i was paying for their rent <laughs> i tell i tell you my sister will kill me if you she was like, I don't know. Are you under some juju? Should we pray for you, Mary? I know you are prayerful, so how is this happening to you? Can't you see? I don't know. I don't really know. I believed it could change. I think that was the mistake. A lot of ladies do that. I believe it could change. I believe in the fact that he had a gift, a calling. Um, you were in love. Yes, and I believed, yeah. Are you still in love with him? Oh, no. Okay. Thank God. Uh, no ah, Move wow. on a long time ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> How's your present relationship? Oh, wonderful. Yeah? Yes, because I am grateful for the past experience. And actually, it, the experience made me get to know me better. Because I think I was young, naive. I didn't have a lot of these experiences. And so I went in there with my naive self but with that i took the time to know who i am you know heal heal myself from all that that i went through and traveling and all of that and with knowing who i am and what i want i am not settling for less or giving uh, my 100 percent when the other partner is not giving their 100 percent as well and so that has really blessed my current relationship and i am with a very awesome man i must say it treats Hallelujah me way better, way better. To awesome man yes <laughs> okay <laughs> on that awesome note let's connect with auntie millie now hi auntie millie nice to meet you <laughs> nice to meet you again auntie millie so tell us yeah. what's your story um my story um, started um, early 90s when I first came to this country in, in the UK. Um, this is where I've lived for the past 32 years. Um, so I met this guy, same as Auntie Mary, in church. Um, he was like an usher in church. So I thought, okay, this is the kind of man I want. I wanted a Christian man. So when I met him, I was so happy. He was very handsome as well big tall dark skin 
big eyes, dimples, you know, he had it all. So I thought, oh, okay, this is the what you know what I wanted. So first he asked me for a date, and I said no. And then we met in a factory where I went to get a job. He came to work there, um, and so when we finished work, he would want to give me a lift home. So that's how we, you know, we started it as friends. And then I think a year into the the friendship, he asked me out because he came to know me a bit better. He knew where I came from in Ashanti region, which is um, Tepa, and he comes from Akwesiafe as well. So it was like, oh, Mikromni, Mikromni. So it was, that's how it started. And um, as a matter of fact, beginning, I didn't want to date him because I was used to, like, I grew up in the barracks. I was used to high-class people. And he didn't have a very good English accent. But I thought, okay, I can teach him you know, to become my level. So this is how we started dating. And then 95, we got married. Mm. By then I had known him like five years into the relationship. We got married. Then I had my youngest son because I had a son in Ghana before I came here. So um, 1999, he was deported from here back to Ghana. For three years, he was in Ghana. I set this guy up. I bought him trucks. The double azo, 10, 10 ties, double azo. The big ones, I bought four. Wow. Because um, in the UK, I was a dentist and he was a bus driver. So literally, I was more of the breadwinner in the family. So I could afford it. So I thought, okay, until I'm able to bring him back here, I'm going to set him up a business so that he can run it whilst he's there. And then he can bring me some of the money to be paying off the loan here. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Was I wrong? When he got back home and he got all that money, he started partying, drinking, bringing women into our bed, and people were reporting to me. And I was like, oh, you know, he's on his own, and maybe these women are the ones that are taking care of him and cooking and doing his washing and stuff. So it's, it's no problem. I literally turned a blind eye to it. Literally. Let him do anything he wanted. So three years into him being deported, I had filed his papers because I was a dentist. They gave him indefinite right from Ghana before he came here. So literally, I bought his ticket. The next day, he was on the plane here. But the last time I caught him with a woman in our bed was when he went to the interview at British um, Embassy and messed up because he wasn't very fluent in English. So I had to fly I think they called me on a Wednesday, Thursday morning. I was on a flight coming to Ghana and then he didn't know I was coming. So when I got to Ghana, he had a woman in our bed, in our bedroom. So what I did was I went to the next room and went to sleep. So the, the guy, the caretaker, I went and told him, Madame is here. So literally he ran into our bedroom, went on his knees, begging me. And I said, you know what? No problem. Just let her go. So the the afternoon I told her this is why I'm back in Ghana and I have to fly out tonight because I came, I have on duty, I'm on call, but I had, I had to leave being on call to come to this interview with you. So I need to go tonight. So we need to get ready to go to the British Embassy. Long story short, I took him, he got his everything and then he got the visa the next day. I literally held his hand and we came back into this country. Whew. When I remember those days, as Auntie Mary said, you don't even know if you're under a spell or whatever. Because I was coming to Ghana every six months with my son. And for three years, we were coming like twice a week. All the bills, tickets, spending money, my son ticket. He never paid a dime. It was literally me coming with my son. And then all the monies that he's worked for, hoping that I'll get money to be able to buy our stuff, spending money and stuff. There's no money. So I will come and we will live off my money. We will live off my credit cards and all that stuff. I, now when I look back, I'm like, what the hell? Like, what was I thinking? You know, to cut, to cut the long story short, he came here. And not knowing before he left, he had a girlfriend. Before he was deported, he was cheating with somebody and the girl was pregnant. So whilst he was in Ghana, the girl had had a first child, which was a daughter. After all the monies that I have spent and lost 
everything. He never paid a dime to me. All the monies I borrowed from the bank, everything, he never paid anything. He had the gas to come here and continue his relationship with this woman. So the day I caught him, it was like I found uh, his telephone bill in the post. And then I confronted him and he denied it. So it was like I had to get back and find a way of tricking this girl to tell me the truth. Because this time I was going to put my foot down. So when I called the girl, I pretended that at the time he was selling his car that he had left in the garage whilst he was deported to Ghana. So I said to this lady, oh, um, I, I just saw your name and you wanted to buy um, Mr. Dubofor's car. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, can I speak to him? And then he said, oh, um, um, he's at work. I said, so who are you again? He said, oh, I'm his girlfriend. Uh, I just had a baby. So we, we need a bigger car, blah, blah, blah. He, she was just going on and on and on. And I said, okay, when he comes, can you tell him that Millie said she's interested in the car? And then she put the phone down. And I think she must have called him straight away. Um, when he was at work and he literally packed his bus and ran home. So when he got home, I was like, oh, so after everything that I've done, you were deported, bringing you back, setting you up a business, doing everything as a woman. I mean, the three years that you went to live in Ghana, you didn't leave us a penny. I spent my money, including taking care of you, plus setting you up a business. And you came back. This is how you're going to repay me. He just stood there looking at me. Oh, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Blah, blah. I said, the girl is having a baby. Well, yeah. Oh, she's had a baby and it's a girl. I said, so what are you going to do about it? Oh, it was a mistake. And because we can't have more children, can you take this girl and like our own so that I will not have anything to do with him? No. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take care of another woman's child while she's alive. She's not in need of, of another mother. And so what you need to do is to start packing your stuff and go live there. Because she's young. She needs a father. My son was almost 10 years old at the time. So I said, you need to pack your stuff and go live with this woman. Because that baby... It's not going to be another statistics. He needs a father in that home to bring him up. At least mine is older and I'm not going to take your crap. You need to go. And he says, oh, I'm not leaving. He was trying to be big. I said, listen, I'm giving you five minutes. By the time I open my eyes, I want you gone or I'm getting the police to throw you out. So that's how he started talking his stuff. So by the time the... Wow. Wow. You know what? I think this is a great time to just take a quick break while we take all of that in. When we return, we'll talk some more. You're watching We Got This Africa. Have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Kaiser Intelligent System is that magical experience in our lapel range. And it's got a TFT touch control system in this extractor 
an induction hot plate with a tempered glass surface powered by the world premium Shot Siran. Shock resistant and it comes with its grill plates. Every space of this induction hob can cook and we call it the Frizo. Just touch to control the extractor fan speed. The power slide on the induction hob gives you the freedom to regulate its power to your desire. Magically powerful in extracting heat, smoke and harmful odors without being a noisy nuisance in your cooking space. And because we care, the induction hob has a safety guard and child lock function. Now, look at that food. Kaiser knows how to bring the best in every cook. Kaiser. Power in action. And we're back. How does it feel to give all of your heart to someone and sometimes all of your money only to find that they were taking you for a fool? After listening to Auntie Millie and Mary, I'm like, these are crazy stories you're telling us today. And the one question I, I, I kept asking myself while you were talking was, what, but why did it go on for so long? But why did it go on for so long? And I think it's easy to ask that because, you know, I, I'm, I'm like the third person on the outside. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably ask yourself that too now when you look back. Yeah. But, girl, <laughs> I mean, Auntie Millie, first of all, how long was your relationship for? Because from all that you've said, it sounds like it was more than four years. It was 19 years. God save me. 19 we were married years. For 19 years. When you look back at all of all of that, all that happened, what was the learning from there? Um, as Auntie Mary said, you should go in a relationship not with your heart first. I think you should go with your head first. You know, and. Um, I, I would say I wasn't matured. I was very matured when I met this man. You know, I'd had a baby. And my son was like seven, eight. So I was a matured woman, actually. So I, I knew what I was doing. I wasn't young and naive. But I, I, sometimes I ask myself, how was he able to fool me and use me like that? I, I can't tell you except that it's love. That's all I can say. In the, in the middle of all that hurt and heartbreak and betrayal, what kept you going? Why did you want him so much? What did he bring to the relationship? Oh, as a woman, you always want to keep your house together for your children. Um, number one, you know that divorce is not a good thing. I mean, it, it just destroys the kids. And as a, as a woman and a mother, you always put your children first. For me, that's what it was. Because I'd had a, a, a son already with, with no marriage. So when I met him, even though all my friends said to me, um, when we were in Ghana, you were dating handsome and better men like him. He can't even speak English. Don't marry him. It wasn't about that. It was me wanting to put my children in a home with a father. Because I thought that boys need a father. You know, so that's why I stayed for that long, for the boys. Would you do it again? Oh, hell no. <laughs> no. You don't feel that boys would need their father now? Um, no. I, I just think that you destroy because... yourself in the process as the mother, and you're no good for the kids when you destroy yourself. Because it got to a stage that I was so hurt that it was destroying me and destroying me. They weren't, they weren't getting my full attention as their mother, you know, because I could sit at one place the whole day, just nodding back and forth in my rocking chair the whole day and not talk. And, and that's probably the time they needed me the most. And I wasn't there for them. So I wouldn't do, I would destroy myself in the process. I would rather let go so I can give them more of my time. Yeah. There are many young women now staying in relationships and marriages. 
that are literally toxic to them and their children. But they are staying in these marriages because they want to keep the home together. They don't want to divorce because the children need their father and so on. What would you say to a woman like that? Um, I on the, you know, on the same level, co-parenting doesn't mean that you have to be together. If you're going to destroy yourself in the process to be there for your children as a mother and not give the boys what they need, you have failed as a mother. So I think number one is to leave. If you're not happy, just leave, but come to an agreement so the boys can have their father in their life. And their mother as well. So they'll go to their father when they need their father's time. And then they come to you as their mother. And I think it works. It works. You know, it works really well. Don't just stay in there and destroy yourself. Now, I find that a lot of women who say this, among other things, are not economically empowered. So they need the man because he provides for them. What you often hear is, Now, me jana me Like, what do I do? What do I have? Where will I go to? And because of that, many women are staying in such marriages and such relationships, which is literally breaking them down mentally and destroying them and the children. Do, would you still say leave if you don't have any money or anywhere well, to go? If you, if you stay, first of all, as a woman, you have to empower yourself. You know, I've always said that our parents, um, as women, they didn't tell us the right things, especially our mothers growing up. You see, oh, we are we are now we are we are good wife. Then your husband will give you everything, which is wrong. I mean, I'm thinking of writing a book about this very soon. We need to teach these women these days that you need to empower yourself first before you get into a relationship. No woman wants a woman. In this 21st century, that doesn't bring something to the table. You know, you have to go into a relationship knowing I'm not going to be in the relationship because if, he's, if I leave, he's not going to give me money to buy food and I can't take care of my children. You have to be able to be independent financially to be able to say, I've had enough, I'm going. Whether you provide for the kids or not, me as their mother, I will do everything and take care of my children. And you can still do that and allow the boys to have time with their father as a good mother. So don't go into a relationship and think, oh, you see, you are in the corner, you are in me and give me everything. So you don't have your own money. And then you just stay there until he gives you chop money, gives you school fees, he gives you everything. So if anything is happening, you're stuck. Because when you leave, you don't know how to take care of your children. So first, you have to empower yourself as a woman. Did you have family telling you to stay? Or did you um, know yes, was my dad going? did. If not because of my dad, I would have left earlier. Because when I first came to Ghana and found him with a woman in my bed, I packed all my stuff, got a van, and took my, everything to my dad's house in Kumasi. And it was my dad that made me come back to him and say, if not for my dad, I wouldn't have even brought him back the second time in the first place. It was my dad that woke me up at 4 a.m. in the morning, held my leg, and begged me to take him. Why? Yeah. Mary, did you have family asking you to stay with your man? I did not even know him. I didn't tell anyone, actually. But so, you were planning to get married. Yes, but I have not introduced them to their family yet. Um, only my sister knew him and also some of my friends. But because I was staying in another country, so my family and friends became my work colleagues and then the church, as in the pastor in his family, became my family. You get it. And in that... Every time I was complaining, they keep telling me, pray about it, and that uh, it's the devil. We all know um, who he is. We know the gift God has given him. It's the devil trying to twat him. And so just pray for him, pray about him. Man, I fasted and prayed more than I've prayed for myself. Like, I prayed for him 
so long and so much. What were you hoping the prayer would do? That it would change. That so it would stop. Him. Yeah. He will stop the things him. that he was doing, that he will get a job so that he can actually work and do and earn money for himself without always you not know, running back to me. You know, because even with the businesses that we started, he was not bringing any returns. I was seeing nothing. So I already knew he has already messed it up. So I was not really even looking forward to get anything from there. So I was just praying that he gets something to do so he can stand on his own feet. But... That is it. It just didn't change. So I just saw it at that moment. Actually, I just saw that, no. I think God speaks to us. We just sometimes ignore it. That is just it. Because I understood there and then that I was in a cycle. There is no way it was going to change. And actually, the very last point when I decided to plan and leave him and did all the planning, I was sleeping at 3 a.m. I just heard clearly audible clear voice said leave him and i woke up you know and that night before i had prayed about it i was telling god i'm tired i can't do this anymore if he's your servant and you've called him with all these gifts to worship you in the church then you have to change him if he's not changing then god i am also your servant what about me what about all the pain i'm going through 3 a.m i heard clearly leave him and that same day was when i planned everything so it took me a week to plan my exit <laughs> then i did that sent the box and everything and i closed that and chapter. you never looked back no i never did and funny enough you know that twist in this story two months later with all the beggings he was sending me emails begging and everything two months later i heard he was married to another girl Ooh. yes sister Ooh. i got married two months mm. to another girl yep did you know this girl no I didn't know. So the whole time, he was seeing someone else? Yes, it seems so. Probably with your money. Absolutely. Because he didn't give me a penny. Do you pray I for this girl? I never got anything. Huh? I, oh, when I heard it, the first prayer that I did was, God, this girl doesn't know what she's gotten herself into. I pray you open her eyes. And if that is your will for that girl as well, give her the strength to stay in that marriage. And you know, just uh, March this year, the girl looked for me on Facebook. I did not even know her. Messenger. She sent me messages. Um, Hi, this is me. This is um, the, the, the wife. Can I please speak to you? I'm like, no. I saw the message the first time. I ignored it. She sent a second message. I ignored it. The third one. She called me. It was 12 a.m. here. And she is living in Paris. She called me and she was asking me, I beg you, please tell me what happened. Why did you separate from him? I told her everything. She's like, oh, I now understand everything that we are going through. It's really, really difficult. I am very young. I cannot stay in this marriage anymore. I think I'm going to leave. I'm like, hey, you didn't know this. You jumped into the marriage. Now you are telling me this. I just listened to her because I, I saw that she wanted to run to someone who have been with the person Change before. Help. Yes. So she was just talking. And I said, ah, it's your decision. You said you prayed about it. God said you should marry him. When you clearly knew, he cheated on me with you and so if you say god says you should marry him then also pray if god says you should leave then you leave him that's all i told her then she was like i'm so sorry i'm really really sorry she was begging but you know what i think we should all take a moment to pray for this girl right now <laughs> we should all pray for this girl oh, yeah. because all that she has said is mm -hmm. very unpalatable mm. and if she has married him mm then I can only imagine what she's going through right now. Oh, yeah. If you're in a similar situation, we pray for you, man. <laughs> and, you know, like Auntie Millie said, it's best for you to get out before you die. Absolutely. You're watching We Got This Africa. We'll be right back. We Got This.
Feels great to have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. What do you do when you find that you're in a toxic relationship or marriage? Do you stay? Do you go? How do you get out? How do you stay on if you want to stay? These are the conversations we're having today on We Got This Africa and so far, so very complicated. I have Mary in studio and Auntie Millie joining us via Zoom all the way from the United Kingdom. Auntie Millie, what would be your final words to women currently in relationships like this? My advice would be just go, you know, because you're of no good to your children if you're hurting and you're not yourself. You're not good to your kids. So you just, it's better you leave. But when you leave, don't take the children away from their father because children need two parents growing up. So please don't take the kids away from their father. Do you believe that people change? That a person like this I don't can think change? So. I don't think people change. I think it, people just put it at bay for a bit and then they get back to it. Because um, my ex-husband, he will never change. He will never change. Okay. Auntie Billy, thank you so much for joining us via Zoom. Thank you guys for having me. Thank it you was for such sharing. a pleasure talking to you ladies. Mwah. Mary. Mwah. Bye bye. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> final words to other young girls listening to us today. Okay. What I will say is when the person shows you his character in the first early uh, part of the relationship, please take note of it. And if you know you can't deal with it, run as fast as you can. Okay, just run. Know yourself, know your standards, know what you want in your mind, and do not compromise. Don't, 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 let, don't lower it to suit the man. Let that standard be there, and then the right person that suits you will come, and the standard will measure up with that person. Never, never lower it, because when you do that, you are destroying yourself. At the end of the day, even as a Christian, God has made you in his image. You have been made as a powerful being. You know, you are just a child of God. And so you can imagine if you lower yourself to that corner where you allow a man to make you uh, suffer that much pain and you still be in there, even God will not be happy with you. Gospel, mm. that is the word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You are a child of God. You deserve all things good, all things beautiful, all things wonderful, and all things that make you feel like a person who deserves love. Violence, abuse, mistrust, pain, constantly being meted out to you in a relationship is not a place you should be. So if you're in a relationship like that, I hope that our episode today has helped you. My name is Nashako, and this has been our episode on weird relationships on We Got This Africa. Life is full of places. Sometimes you good, sometimes you bad. While we run this race, although it's far from And it's now time for our frightful moment because you deserve a life of goodness. So I've got this really smart chap here. <laughs> Mary. Yeah. On a scale of one to five, how smart are you feeling? I think five. Quay! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Form six words out of the word frightful. Just any word? Out of frightful. Oh, okay. Fry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Don't say tall. <laughs> <laughs> Lot. Okay. Um, uh, try. Okay. Um, loft. Um, how much? Hey, so that's four. Two more, two more. Home run, um, finish hard. Mm, mm, mm. Huh? Off. <laughs> okay. Last one. Off. And low. Low. 
L O. Lo and behold, lo. Is that a word? Yeah. Lo and behold. Lo. L O is a, is a word. Lo. Yeah. What does it mean? Lo and behold. But what does the lo mean? <laughs> Here and now. <laughs> lo. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. I find. You want a box of fried salt cooking oil because you deserve a life of goodness. We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness.